Well, hello, here we are at Redgate Farm, and today we're going to go over the Slavic Beauty Creamer. Now, for many years, we milked goats, and we always wanted a way to separate the cream because cow milk and goat milk are slightly different. In that goat milk, we call it naturally homogenized. Essentially, it has smaller fat particles in it, so it doesn't separate like cow's milk. You take cow's milk, you put it in the refrigerator for a day, you come back the next day, nice thick layer of cream on the top. It's not so much with goat milk. It doesn't separate as readily and so in order to make cream and butter and things like that it's best to have a creamer uh, now this one is actually relatively cost effective it's made with all metal parts as you can see except for this plastic and this plastic um, but it is made in the ukraine and it took us oh six to eight weeks to get it and then it showed up and it had shipping damage and then they had to set another one so it was a long time in the coming, but we did not want to do a video until we had used it for quite a few times. And so we've used it for several months. About every two days we use it because we do four gallons at a time. And it, it allows us to make uh, a couple pounds of butter a week. And so we used it a lot. We made some changes. So now I think we're in a groove and we'd like to kind of go over this with you in case you're considering buying a creamer. Uh, there's some things that we learned along the way. First and foremost, the Slavic Beauty uh, is not, it does not have a base on it. So when you get it, it just has these, these screws that come with it and it's, it's free. So what we did was we took a slab of walnut from the barn and uh, I put a little coat of polyurethane and set it on here. Now you'll see down here there's a layer of silicone. It's like a little silicone bead we put there because this weep hole right here, if the milk leaks at all, it's going to leak out of here and go down here and fall down on the board. And so we went ahead and put a little silicone bead there, and we've got this nice platform. And now this platform's not enough. You're going to have to pin it down. And so I've just got these little clamps that I clamp it to the table. And that way, after I clean it, I can put it over there and out of the way. But this keeps it nice and secure when you turn it because this handle is uh, it's, it's a pretty good force to be turning that and you don't want the milk to spill and stuff. So first thing is you got to secure the thing. Second thing is it's just got a little slot here to put oil in, like three in one oil, and that's about it. And the rest of it is a bunch of pieces and parts that look confusing, but they're really not. This is a centrifugal creamer and so it spins. And if you run this at 60 RPM, this goes at about 1,000 RPM. So quite a bit of a gear ratio in there. So the pieces and parts are the separator discs. Now, if you have an older version of this, it has A and B discs that are all different. Uh, they're different shapes, and you have to alternate A, B, A, B, but you don't have to do that with this one. The newer model, the, all the discs are exactly the same. Um, and so this goes on to the centerpiece here, and there's a, a black uh, seal right here. It's, a, it's an O-ring. And that comes with an extra O-ring because that'll eventually wear out, and that's where you're going to get milk leaking out the bottom there. So you put these discs on, and you kind of shake them into place like that. Uh, and then this is where you set, this is a set screw right here. This is how you set the cream, heavy cream, light cream. And you kind of got to play with that a little bit. And even after you set it, it might change because... As the goats graze different parts of the pasture, and as the season change, and as they give birth, and the later they get in their milking cycle, their cream content changes. And so you might change that a little bit, but we've kind of over the past month or so, we've come up with a setting that we really like. It gives us about two um, quarts of cream for four gallons of milk. And we kind of stayed there because it makes really good butter from that. And so that literally inserts into here, and I've got to line this up to make sure it lines up correctly. That little set screw, let me get this in here. That little set screw has to line up with that hole. Okay. So then this goes on top of there, and you screw it all together. Okay. And they send this nifty little tool that. If you lose this tool, um, gosh, I don't know how to screw this thing on. So <laughs> you might want to make sure you keep track of that little tool because that's going to be kind of important. Okay. So these, this is the guts of the system. The milk comes in here. And just real briefly, I'll show you. 
cream comes out here and milk comes out here. And you'll see that when we put it on here. Okay, it spins freely. And now we have these two. This is for the milk. Okay, so as the milk comes out these holes right here, it falls down here and flows out there. This is for the cream. And you see the cream comes out here and it runs through here and it falls into the quart jars. So that's the physics of it and all the pieces and parts. Right now I'm just going to set this on top. And this is a float. It goes right in there. This goes on the top. And now this plugs the hole so that you can pour the milk in and get it spinning before you actually put it with milk. If you look down there, if I turn it this way, you'll see a hole there. It allows the milk to flow through. But if I turn it to the side, it doesn't allow milk to flow through. Now you're probably asking, how do I know where that hole is when there's a bunch of milk in there? It's a little notch on the side of the bowl, kind of convenient, because when I turn the white handle and point it towards that notch, it means that the valve is open. So that's it. We're all ready. We just need to heat our milk up to 100 degrees and start the creaming process. So when we come back, I will show you all the pieces and parts that we do for the actual collection of the cream and the skim milk. Well, here we are with our Slavic Beauty Creamer. And you really want to get set up before you start cranking because you don't want to be running around the kitchen trying to gather things. So we have milk heated to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, around 35C. We've got a little bowl here, a big bowl to catch the skim milk. And then we've got two quarts over here to catch the cream. And what's going to happen is we're going to start cranking this. And we will release the milk into the creamer and you'll start to see it pour out. So I'm going to start by just pouring some of this milk into the top there. This is about four gallons of milk. I think I splashed a bunch on the ground there. It doesn't hold all four gallons, so we'll start cranking. Go ahead and start cranking. It starts pretty slow because of the gear ratio. What we do to keep it's supposed to be cranked at 60 RPM, so we have a little stopwatch there. And it, once we see that he's up to 60 RPM, basically that's one rotation per second. That's about good. And we'll turn this, we'll open the valve. It gets a little harder when you actually open the valve for the milk, so they'll have to speed back up. But he's he's right at 60 right now, a little bit fast actually. Sometimes it takes a while to get into the groove.
about five minutes now. We're not quite at a quarter. I'm going to let this go a little bit longer. It looks like this cream content is a little bit lower than we've seen in the past. So it may be something that the, the goats are eating on pasture there. The cream content kind of goes up and down. We'll go ahead and switch this jar out. some skim milk with this little bowl here and put it back in there and what that does is wash the cream out of the components. All those little discs, there are 12 of those, you want to wash the cream out of there. So. stops cranking it's going to make a, an awful racket it's not broken that's just the gears disengaging and we just let it spin down on its own Okay, we're all done separating the cream from the milk. And I want to mention there are three things that can affect the cream content. First of all, it's the type of milk you start with. Is it cow milk? Is it goat milk? This particular milk is alpine goat milk, and they're at mid-lactation right now. They uh, hit it in the spring, and it's midsummer right now. The other thing that affects it is the set screw that we talked about before in the middle. And the third thing is the RPM, the actual speed of the rotation. As you saw, my son, who normally doesn't do this, I, we had him do it for the video so I could talk, he was not really good at keeping 60 RPM. He got a little bit fast. Well, if you get a little bit fast, uh, it can cut down the cream content. It's actually um, a little bit different uh, rates uh, that you get when you, when you do that. So those are the three factors that are going to affect your cream content. But this skim milk, it might still have a little fat in it. We use a lot for the pigs. We mix it with their feed. We have not tried yet, but we're going to try to make our normal cheese with it because you can start with skim milk to make cheese. So we're going to try that, some mozzarella, some soft cheese. And uh, we're probably not going to do the cheddar because that's a pretty long process to do. So if you have any questions, you can go to our Patreon site and sign up to be a Patreon member. Or you can just uh, put it in the comment block on YouTube.